Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am doing this one alone. Um, sorry it's been so long. It's been a little bit of a break. Uh, just I've been working about twice as much as usual, and so it's just been hard to find the time. Also, I'm trying something new here. I, I've, one of my cats is being particularly needy today. It's been a long time since I've let her sit in here while recording. We'll see if she can behave. Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm already having some questions. Uh, you can't see what's happening here, so you don't understand why I'm having questions, and it's difficult to explain. But she was laying calmly on the floor right up until I hit record, and... Now she's moving around and pushing and sticking her nose in in my hand and against my leg and I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. If if she could just settle in and just like do her flirting thing, you know, where they roll back and forth on their back, that'd be okay. We we may have to pause somewhere in here though. Um. I thought that Liberty Larry had died maybe at one point. He hasn't. Um, I don't know where he is right now. But uh, anyway, um, and I probably should have just scripted something because this is more stuff that I was thinking about last week. And But I, I don't do that. So uh, we'll just have to I'll, – I'll muddle through and we'll see. We'll see if something, something good comes out of it. Um. Mostly, I wanted to talk about... Well, hopefully, I can paint a picture, a word picture, of a double standard that goes on. And, and the... I mean, there's no sense in, like, pointing out the hypocrisy of people in government, right? Like, that's just... Everybody sees that, I'm sure. Um, but this uh, particular case seems really um, pointed... Um, in terms of some of the the ways that things are approached, and uh, depending on who you are and what you're up against, I guess. So later this week, um, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Stuart Scheller um, is going to be court-martialed, and he uh, you may remember him. He is the guy that put out a video on social media. Um, criticizing um, the way that the the uh, powers that be handled the withdrawal from Afghanistan and demanding accountability from the military leadership for the the debacle that was the the uh, withdrawal and um, so he was uh, arrested and imprisoned um, and he's being charged with, uh, conduct unbecoming of an officer, dereliction of duty, um, defiance of direct orders, uh, etc. And uh, I, I think that this is this is just a really interesting case because um, this is another example, as you know, as we've talked about so many times, of where the people that made the mistake in government, in the Pentagon, what have you. Um, the people that should be held accountable are not being held accountable. And the people that brought attention to the fact that these people had made mistakes um, are the people that are actually being held accountable, uh, that are facing, uh, quote-unquote, justice um, in, this, in this case. And just to, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, he, he knew what he was getting into. He said from the very beginning that this was probably the end of his military career um, and that he was willing to go to prison for it. And so, well, uh, they, <laughs> I guess they answered his request. Um, but uh, all he did, and I, I, okay, so let me also say that I understand why um, you wouldn't want um, people within the chain of command going to the public 
uh, to criticize their um, superiors. Like, you know, this this can create some kind of problems, I'm sure, that that you don't need within a, a fighting force. All right. I, I, I certainly understand that. And um, there's a strict chain of command for a reason. I get that. But this is a guy who was a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Marine Corps. Um, he, he'd been involved for a long time. It's not like it was some grunt saying, oh, you know, that stupid lieutenant, he has no idea what he's doing and telling the public. This is a this is an officer, a, a, high, a fairly high-ranking officer himself, um, criticizing those above him, and um, and up up to and including the commander in chief. And you know, suddenly this is a this is a huge issue. Even though, um, for example, uh, actually, I think he's the same rank, right? Or maybe not. Um, was it just Colonel Vindman uh, stood in front of Congress and criticized um, Donald Trump? Um, for his dealings with Ukraine, and nobody seemed to have any problem with that. In fact, he was he was hailed as a uh, as a brave whistleblower, et cetera, et cetera. But this guy, he's he's not getting whistleblower protections. Um, Stuart Scheller, he's he's probably going to end up serving some time um, after a court martial. We'll see. Um. But, you know, other examples of this in the past, and this is just an all-too-common theme in government, it seems, um, the uh, CIA torture program was exposed. Um, I mean, these are horrible, inhumane acts. Uh, They violate all kinds of domestic and international laws. Um, The executive branch was deeply involved uh, in um, coming up with justification for why it was legal. Um, it's very questionable, I would say, at least. And uh, and so, as f- you know, the person who ended up serving time for this was not any of the people that were actually involved in the torture program. The it was John Kiriakou for leaking the information about the torture program for being the whistleblower. John Kiriakou served time for the CIA torture program, even though he wasn't involved in it except insofar as he exposed it to the public. None of the people involved in the torture went to jail, but he did. Um, Daniel Hale, I always think that that's not right, but I'm pretty sure it is. Daniel Hale uh, just recently um, went to prison for exposing uh, issues with the drone program, that they weren't so sure about their targets all the time, that they were killing lots more innocent people than they had claimed, etc., now, none of the people involved in those decisions to drop bombs on, you know, like, for example, the family that, that they drone bombed uh, as we were leaving Afghanistan. Um, nobody went to prison for any of those, but Daniel Hale is now in prison for releasing that information to the public, for exposing the war crimes um, that the U.S. was involved in. Um, same thing with Chelsea Manning, right? Uh, Chelsea Manning uh, served prison time for leaking um, the, uh, the, um, war documents, um, including the video of, uh, U.S. soldiers, um, shooting journalists. Uh, I mean, but none of those other people, none of the people involved in the crimes went to prison, only the whistleblower. Um, and strangely enough, uh, we have a similar kind of thing going on right now with the Facebook thing. Um, this, uh, Francis Hagen, or, uh, I think that's her name. I really should have taken more notes instead of just thinking about this, but, um, is, is now being exalted as this great and brave whistleblower for, um, exposing the crimes of Facebook, uh, that were aware that some of their activities that, um, draw people into their site could be dangerous. Now, I have a whole lot more to say about that too, but I wanted to, to, um, have uh, Liberty Larry here when we talk about that since he's got two teenage daughters or nearly teenage daughters Um, and I I thought that it would be more interesting uh, to have his perspective on that but on the on the outside of this um, you have uh, Francis Hagen who is being uh, like I said exalted by the media as a whistleblower um, for this these Facebook issues 
and and she deserves apparently whistleblower protections, or so they claim. But not John Kiriakou, Daniel Hale, Chelsea Manning, um, not to mention uh, Julian Assange, Edward Snowden. Um, you know, Snowden has been uh, effectively exiled to Russia. Um, and, you know, that even is being used against him and to, you know, to, you know, make the claim that he's somehow involved with Russia. Uh, a couple of things that I feel like should be pointed out about this that maybe a lot of people don't know um, is that he was on his way to South America uh, when he was trapped, essentially, in Russia by the U.S. government, uh, who revoked his passport while he was in the air. Um, so he landed in Moscow and no longer had a valid passport, so he couldn't get on his next flight. And just something to think about there, if they really thought that this guy was a traitor who was, who was willing to sell all this information to Russia, do you think they would have pointedly trapped him in Moscow? I doubt it. Although there is an argument to be made for incompetence, but but I doubt it. I mean, they they know that he is um, is a true patriot and isn't going to give information to Russia that you know top secret information to Russia, or they wouldn't have left him there, left him stranded there. Uh, it became a a useful political tool, though. And uh, and really, what this whole Facebook thing is about at this point is the is that the government wants to control the internet. The government has always wanted to control the internet. Um, the net neutrality thing failed, and this is just the new, the new attempt. Um, so, you know, you have this Francis Hagen, this whistleblower out there, talking about how Facebook was aware that, uh, that some of the way that they build their algorithms... Um, to get more clicks and more engagement and so forth uh, can be can have negative impacts on the users. Well, I mean, I think I don't think that we needed some whistleblower for that. I think that that's pretty obvious. I mean, I I literally log into Facebook to post this podcast, and that's that's it. Um, I I think that all uh, social media is a, just a cancer. But um, I mean, I think that it can have value, but I don't think that. I don't think that it's used particularly well. And there is something about people that, are, that, is, that draws them to drama uh, of various kinds. And, uh, you know, taking advantage of that is just, I don't know, I think it's only natural. But um, anyway, you know, she's out there uh, saying now that social media needs to be legislated. Um, but it, it's not about protecting you. It's about information control. Uh, they feel that nobody can admit that Donald Trump actually beat Hillary Clinton because she was a terrible candidate, um, e even somehow worse than Donald Trump, and that she campaigned poorly and that she lost in some areas where she didn't campaign at all, and that she didn't campaign at all in those areas because when she was campaigning in those areas, her numbers were going down. Like, she was so unlikable that in Wisconsin and Michigan and all these places, um, that when she was out there talking to people, they liked her less and less, so she just stopped campaigning there. Which was the smart move, obviously, but it didn't work out in the end. Um, and... So they're reaching for any excuse as to why this happened uh, that they can blame on an outside force. And so one of the things that they have been blaming this entire time is social media, that social media, um, I don't know, uh, I guess magnified um, something. I, I, I don't think it's even very well defined um, that – but the truth is that, you know, they'll blame the Russian bots and what have you. And, um, but as we discussed at the time, the, this Russian click farm thing only invested like a hundred thousand dollars in, in ads. Um, and almost half of it were after the campaign had ended and they were just a little clickbait at, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's it's absurd, but it becomes an excuse, and then it also becomes a an it becomes an excuse for the failure of the Clinton campaign, and then it also becomes an excuse 
to try and take control of this information through legislating social media. And uh, again, it's not it's not about protecting your children, although that's always a good excuse. You know, the won't someone please think of the children is is a recurring theme, but it's not the reason. They don't care about you and they don't care about your kids. What they care about is making sure that they control what you think, what you know. Um, you know, the great crimes of John Kiriakou and Daniel Hale and Chelsea Manning and uh, Julian Assange and Edward Snowden is that they told you things that you should know, but your government didn't want you to know. And so, and the other half of this, like, and this is probably just as important, is the way that they end up legislating anything now is by creating a new bureaucracy uh, to make rules. Um, the executive branch, Congress, they don't really legislate anymore. They just, they just create new, new agencies and empower them to create legislation. It's totally unconstitutional. Like, this is completely unconstitutional, but it, it's, a, it's a tool that, that they can use to separate themselves from the legislation so that they don't have to take responsibility for it. In the same way um, that they're using private businesses around uh, right now to get around the constitutional restrictions on the government, um, and just uh, you know, as a couple of examples of this, uh, you had the the CDC um, eviction moratorium. Uh, the CDC doesn't have the power to to place these kinds of demands on businesses. Um, to create rules that businesses have to, to follow. Um, I mean, they've been, let me say that they shouldn't have that power. They've been given this power, but not to the degree that they tried to use it there. Um, and even the Supreme Court, who generally approves of government ex expanding its powers, since it is also a part of the government, um, the Supreme Court struck down uh, the CDC's eviction moratorium. Um, but, <laughs> then in the end, though, that opinion by the Supreme Court was ignored by the Biden administration, making some excuse of like the ends justifies the means and uh, and saying that, you know, they think it's helping people. And so they're going to continue doing it, even if it infringes on the liberties of the people that the Constitution is supposed to protect. Um. And, and now, actually, the uh, the mass or the uh, vaccine mandates. I, I've been watching this, and we reported a couple of weeks ago that the Biden administration announced that it was going to have the OSHA create um, create requirements for businesses that had more than 100 employees that they would require um, that they would require vaccines or or be subject to heavy fines. And there was an immediate reaction from a bunch of big businesses getting out ahead of this and going ahead and, and putting their, their vaccine mandates down. Now, to my knowledge, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, um, but to my knowledge, there has been no rules uh, created by OSHA um, to do this. And in fact, there hasn't even been an executive order for them to do it. Um, I mean, as far as I can tell... The only thing that's happened is the Biden administration has made an announcement, which has no more power than any other press release. But people are doing it. And so they may have achieved what they were going for um, just by saying that they were, had planned to make these rules. And immediately a bunch of entities um, announced that they were going to challenge these things in court. And, of course, the vaccine mandates coming down from OSHA are legally dubious at best. And so I think that they, they set up a situation, either knowingly or not, where they're getting the results that they want. Um, these businesses are now enforcing uh, what government doesn't have the legal power to do um, because private business can get away with a lot more in terms of what its requirements are of its employees. Um, of course, that doesn't extend to, you know, how much they pay them or what kind of benefits they offer or anything like that. Those things are government mandated. Um, but uh, in, in terms of these vaccines, 
And by the way, I would say that those things are, aren't constitutional either. But um, in terms of these vaccines, the federal government, I think, recognized that they would have a very hard time defending this legally um, to any challenges. And, and they may have intentionally uh, created a situation where they gave the impression that there was some kind of rule being made when no rule was actually made and just relying on, on businesses, private businesses that aren't subject to the same um, legal restrictions – constitutional restrictions to enforce what they wanted done. In a way, it's like, it's kind of genius. And at the same time, it terrifies me, but, and I, and it may have been an accident. <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, Major Garland Briggs said something along the lines of, uh, any bureaucracy that operates in secret inevitably lends itself to corruption. And this is what we now face. I was talking to an old friend recently, and she was asking me about, um, you know, how I felt about the new administration and, uh, you know, prospects for the future and so forth. And I said, I don't think that it matters who sits in that chair in the Oval Office. Uh, that's not... That's not who we're controlled by anymore. That's not that's not who our rulers are. They're figureheads. They're the public face. Um, the people that are actually ruling over us are these entrenched bureaucracies that last from administration to administration that Trump said had such a hard time dealing with in terms of executing his foreign policy, um, and that you know. Actually, I mean, presidents as far back as, as we can remember, the the intelligence – cat, you got to give me my pen back. See, this is the kind of problem that I anticipated and <laughs> why I usually leave her out of here. Like, oh, fine, you can have it. You play. Um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, anyway, yeah, so it's, it's these – entrenched bureaucracies that these agencies that have been created and empowered to create legislation um, as opposed to the people that that we elect uh, actually having control over the rules by which we are supposed to live. Um, all they have done is they, they've sidestepped responsibility um, and still enjoy all the the benefits of of you know these, public facing government jobs um the the money the influence the fame um such as it is but they don't they don't actually do anything except for empower other groups to do things and then when those other groups do things that aren't popular the the legislators that we elect say well we didn't do that um that was done by the CDC or that was done by OSHA or that was done by whomever whatever agency they empowered to make those rules. But then they, they don't take any actual responsibility. Um, back to L uh, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller's issue, like nobody actually is accountable for any of these things, any of these violations of our rights, any of these, I, I mean, and even, you know, ignoring the idea of natural rights, which I have a hard time doing. But for those of you that don't believe in natural rights, the Constitution grants – now, I don't think that it does. The, the rights preexist the Constitution. But, um, but if, you, if, if you think that the Constitution is the law of the land, um, is the, the legal framework uh, through which you know, your, your rights are granted or whatever, they're ignoring that too. And nobody's held accountable for it. And it doesn't matter who you elect. And the only answer is to pare down government to the smallest possible thing that you can. Now, for me, that's nothing, down to nothing. I mean, you know, community, community organizers or, you know, local, local, local leadership um, and volunteerism. Because when you empower any kind of central hub – with the ability to control your life in this way, um, and apparently, actually, the, I guess this grand experiment of America has shown that no matter how much you try and restrict a government, 
it can't be contained. That it is in the nature of government to, to grow, accumulate power, suppress resistance, and eventually oppress its people. And it may not, it, 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 maybe it can't be avoided. Um, certainly the, the people can prevent this, but the people don't. Um, we suffer as long as evils are sufferable rather than change the state to which, I don't remember exactly how it says it. And if I started from the beginning, I could probably do it more or less like it says in the, um, uh, Declaration of Independence, but um, but people are willing to accept uh, a great deal of oppression as long as they're leading fairly comfortable lives. Um, eventually, that all ends, though, and so you have this cycle of revolution that has occurred throughout history, where the elite leadership is eventually taken down by the the multitude of people that are oppressed under its boot. Um, It would be nice if we didn't have to get there, though, wouldn't it? So the only way to really avoid it is to stay involved, to remind the people that you elect that they're accountable to you. Um, And maybe they will then remind the people that they empower to make rules that they're accountable as well. I don't have a lot of faith in that outcome, but um, if you want to work within the system, that's certainly a start. And what has to be done is that you have to pare down government to remind them of the restrictions on their their power over us, that we are a free people. And that's as good a place as any to to end this, I suppose, uh, because my legs are going to sleep and I'm uncomfortable. And... I can't get the cat to stop moving, so. Um, Again, sorry this was so late uh, in coming. Um, You know, we should hopefully get another podcast out here pretty soon, actually. You know, maybe Friday. I'm not sure what uh, what Liberty Larry's schedule is. And honestly, I'm not sure what my schedule is um, at this point. Uh, So, um, but we'll get some more uh, out to you as soon as we can. And, um... In the meantime, uh, follow us on um, Facebook, uh, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, uh, like and share, comment. You can always email me at Michael the Liberty Mike um, if you have you know something that you would like to share, uh, or if something you want me to talk about, you want to share articles with me or what have you, um, or if you just have any questions, or if you have criticisms. Any of those things are fine. Um, Again, it's Michael at the Liberty Mike, and uh, we'll be back uh, as soon as we're back um, with with another podcast when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Ciao. (music) 